So now let's have a look at the construction of tables. And this section, I have to thank Stephen Few, who wrote a great book about graphs and is the first author to really also talk about tables. As with graphs, it's about clear vision and clear understanding. And also, like with graphs, clear vision is about highlighting the data, which means enhancing what is called data ink, the pixels that contain information, versus reducing the non-data ink, that is the pixels that contain supporting information that is necessary to understand your data. For clear vision, there are several steps that you need to take to get your table right. And the first step is delineating rows and columns. You have to decide what the ordering of your information is, whether the rows are important, the columns are important, or both. And there are visual cues that you can use to do that. The first and best one is to use white space. Inserting a little bit of white space between your rows or columns will make those rows or columns stand out. The next possibility is shading, using light shading. The next possibility is using rules, very thin, usually gray lines, to delineate your information. And I would certainly avoid using grids, like you see when you open a spreadsheet program. The next step is to arrange your data, and that means placing the data that needs to be compared close together and, if possible, on one line, because the eye has an easier job in comparing information if it's on a horizontal line than when it's on the vertical. Also, you need to have the information flow from left to right when it's about time or calculation, and when it's about ranking, it should flow from top to bottom. You should try to break your information at logical points, and if your table spans several pages or slides, use headers and footers to remind the reader what they're looking at. And finally, you want to sequence your number so that the numbers are sorted. And when it's about ordering of category, you order your category on the purpose of your table. And that is usually not alphabetical unless you're editing a phone book. The next step is to format your text. And that means avoiding unnecessary precision. Four decimals behind the integer is usually not necessary. Aligning using the right font and emphasis style. And finally, to summarize values where possible. Here's an example of the proper rules for text alignment. You want text and date information to be aligned left in the column. You want numbers aligned right, and you use center alignment only for special cases, such as a single character. The next item is the choice of fonts. And the key here is always legibility, which means you have to use a proportional font. Proportional means that each letter has their own width on the page so that the I is, has a little bit of space and the M has a lot of space. In the table, you can see that Garamond and Calibri are proportional fonts, whereas Courier and Monaco are not and the latter two look a little bit like typewriter letters. The other choice you have to make is whether you are going to use serif or sans serif fonts. The serif is the small line at the end of each letter you can see in Garamond, and those lines are absent in Calibri, which is a sans serif font. Usually for publication, we use serif fonts because they read very nicely. But for presentations, we use sans serif fonts because they are more clear on screen. The next point is emphasis. And there, there's also a difference between publication on paper and presentation. For publication, the order is bold, italics, font, and color, although color printing is usually more costly than black and white. And for presentation, color comes first and then bold and font choice. 
Italics work less well on projection because it reduces legibility. After clear vision comes clear understanding. And clear understanding is just another way to say your table and your graph has to tell a story. Telling a story means organizing your data and the first step in organization is to group the data, segment them into meaningful subsets. There are principles, Gestalt principles for visual perception and these principles are that objects are interpreted as a group when they are placed close together, when they are similar, when they are enclosed, when they are continuous, or when they are connected. The next step is prioritizing the data, ranking and highlighting them by importance using the visual cues, sequencing the data, giving direction for the order in which the data should be read, which means from left to right, from top to bottom, sequenced labels, and where necessary, tabling the data two or more times. And finally, integrating the role of explanatory text. Labels, text placement, and especially table captions should be comprehensive and informative. Let's have a look at an example. This is a table recently published in ARD. It's a very nice table, it's well organized, but I think it can still be improved. So what I did is I exported the numbers from the PDF into Word and took out the background. Let's skip the first bullet point on delineating rows and columns and look at the second one, arranging data. Actually, the arrangement of the data in this table is fine and we really need, don't need to change anything there. However, when we look at the text, I think the formatting can be much improved. Here you can see that I've reduced the precision of all the numbers back to integer except for the p-values. In the next step, I've tried to summarize the values and in this table it meant that I took out all the absolute values and just retained the percentages. As you can see, the clutter is now much reduced because we're only looking at the percentages. The next step is alignment. I've aligned all the numbers right and in the cells where there are multiple entries, such as age at onset, where there is also a standard deviation included, I've added additional tabs in the cell to be able to align those numbers as well. And only the p-values have a decimal value, so they're aligned on the decimal point. For the final touches, I added some very light bands to guide the eye across the long rows, and I changed the color of the letters of the subheadings to make them stand out a little bit more. So that concludes the demonstration of table construction, please have a look at the other videos on graphs.